Last time, there was a lot of Nostroy setting up doing a theatrical play to make Elias hate himself. And Cormac talked to Sigurther for a hot second. I think that is all. Cormac was a sneak sneak with Nostroy. And yeah, that, that was the lo- lots of setup for Cormac yeah. or for Nostroy to ruin Elias' life. There was a lot of that. Zach chooses to depict my methods as dicking around instead of creating a imaginary tapestry on which we can paint our wonders. I will because I gave you four scenes last week. I don't know that you gave me four scenes, but I made four scenes. <laughs> I took four <laughs> scenes. There is a scene where I'm like, okay, you captured the per- people you're trying to capture, and then you are in a wagon, and you're like, let's have a scene in the wagon now. I thought it was, you know, <laughs> look, it's, that's what that's where I wanted to be. Anyway, so who'd like to go first, Nostra or Cormac? Probably not me. Let's not do me first. (laughs) All right. Cormac, tell me, what are you about? So uh, Cormac is heading down to the Duelist Guild. And um, at the the time that he knows that Miguel's favorite fighter is going to be dueling. Miguel's Uh, not there. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Game's over. <laughs> Game's over. You all die. Corbett's going to go med ships. So he like kind of walks in, <laughs> scans the crowd. As you walk down to the dock to mend these ships, you trip and land right like face first into a ship. So they start calling you the reef and beef. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so uh, Miguel walks into the, the sort that's- of arena that's set up for the Duelist Guild and kind of scans around. Um, until he finds a uh, slightly drunken Miguel. Um, it is easy enough to find a slightly drunken Miguel. So you enter this. It is a nice, large arena pit, probably like 20 feet across, you know, the size of a blight dog standing up. Um, he's going to get himself two uh, mugs of ale. Obviously, like, really watered down terrible ale because uh, it's cheap. <laughs> But that's what they got. Um, so he's going to grab two of those and kind of wander over to where Miguel is um, and sit down by him. You're going to have to start this conversation. He's not going to. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so you sit down in this not quite a box seat, but like this like smaller booth where Miguel seems to be alone, at least at the moment. Okay. There is no guard surrounding him or anything, and he looks a little bit dis- disheveled and is focusing on the match at hand. He does not seem super interested in it, but think of, you know, dads on Sunday watching football for a team they don't care about. So so Cormac comes up and he holds up one of the uh one of the ales. Um fancy a drink? I uh I had a fellow who didn't pick one up, so I, I just kind of grabbed it. I'm not, I I don't really need to, I guess. Would you like one? Sure. Well, here you go. And he like gives him one and then like. He he takes the one, the one you don't give him. That's fine. (laughs) Um, and then like settles down, like leans back, lounges, uh, next to him. So why should I not arrest you immediately? You're clearly off duty. Why can't we just sit and You're clearly you know, worth a decent amount of money. Well, thank you for saying so. I said uh, decent, not a lot. <laughs> I I like to be recognized as a decent fellow. Uh who who's out there again? He likes squints. I you're so mean. Uh, you didn't have to name him. You you could have you could have just said no, no, there's not two characters I don't care about, but I don't name people, and it always comes back and haunts me. Well, one of them should be Sigrether. <laughs> not yet. I said it's okay. not people he cares about. Well, yeah, I didn't know if it was, like, at the, the match change, you know? You didn't... No, it's not that. I was giving you a moment. If you guys keep talking about this, I'm going to start talking about Epic again. <laughs> Antonio and Eduardo are fighting right now. Antonio and Eduardo. Who you favor? And this one, Antonio. He's been toying with Eduardo for five minutes. See, so, yeah. uh, favorite of yours? No. I don't care about little runs. Oh, then, uh. He gives you a somewhat pointed look. <laughs> Cormac pointedly ignores it. <laughs> uh, so are you, you waiting for a, a, a big match? 
I'm new to the whole scene, really. Why are you here, Cormac? <laughs> I, uh, you know, got friends who are really into this whole duelist guild thing, and you, you want to have something to talk about with them sometimes. Your friend really loves something. You, you want to give it a try, you know, just so you can say, hey, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be something I love too. And, uh, so I figured, why not? You know, they say it's. Couldn't you have brought your friend here instead of annoying me? No, you want to like do it on your own time, show that you care, and then like have a conversation about it later. You know, <sighs> it's like a nice, it's a gift you give, in a way. I per I like the fighter, Jamie Sastre. He is my preferred fighter. He, I am hoping to recruit him for the guard when he tires of doing this entertainment. Did you ever do this whole thing? Goodness, no. This is what the nobles used to... Well, one, this doesn't exist when we were younger. Oh, all right. I mean, in this capacity, they only fought duels for people who were too cowardly to hold the sword themselves. Which wouldn't be you, naturally, right? I mean, no. I was always trying to keep up with my sister. And do you think she'd let anything go as substantial as me not fighting my own fight? Ha, <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't see that happening. She didn't let it go when I actually fought my own fight, so I think you're right there. So Cormac's just gonna kinda like wait until the Jamie comes out. Alright. So you, you see the the fight go on for a bit, and as you watch the fight, you do see what he was saying was true. Antonio's just is it did I say which one did I say was toying which which? Antonio's toying with Eduardo. Okay, sorry. Antonio is just being toyed with. No, other way. Yes, other way. Oh, gosh. Antonio's just toying with Eduardo. You see that Miguel was very correct. And it is subtle at first, but, you know, it becomes more apparent as you watch. And it seems that Miguel does have a grasp of how these fights work. He has an eye for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. After a few minutes, the fight ends with Antonio being declared the victor. And you can see that on the board, the um, Jamie and... Sigurther, are you doing a fake name for this? Yeah, I put it in. I put it in chat last week. Um, Andrea the Humongous, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Or it enormous. Andrea the Enormous. Yep. I kind of like Humongous better, but that's okay. <laughs> so Jamie is put on one side, or the, the name Jamie's hung up on one side. Andrea's hung up on the other side. They list a start time for. They listen to start time for a few, like, probably, like, ten minutes from now. Okay. You can do what you're doing, and it, the time will not affect it. I'm saying you have a little bit of time before it starts. Okay. Um. So are they, like, warming up and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. So Cormac, like, kind of squints at Jamie and is like, you sure he's he's your guy? He is the best sword of fighter here. How how confident are you in that? He looks a little, I don't know, he's not, he's not scrawny, but he's not, like, you know... He doesn't look like the best fighter here, you know? Okay. I thought you would know that skill is not just biggest arms, but I guess it makes sense seeing as how everything that's happened feels like you were, like, guard number three for your friends. I mean, look, look at the, what's her name? Andrea over there. You, you think he can take her? I do, yes. I don't think a newcomer is going to beat the sword play of the champion. Well, let's let's have a little bet then. Make a check. Convince. Uh, okay. Is it terrible that in my head I'm sitting here going, is there a way for Nyostroy to be <laughs> Sam Fishered in the ceiling to, like, cheat? You're already... Like, make a little spark in front of the guy's eye to blind him <laughs> so that way Sigurther definitely wins because Sigurther is known for losing martial contests convince you said yes convince would that be wits you can use wits yeah I think I wits think this and is convince I think this is witty one two three successes and one die left over I'll buy your die so you can have another hero point okay Alrighty. How much are we talking? Oh, we don't have to do money necessarily. If, how about if, uh, 
if I win, I have a little proposal for you. If you win, you can arrest me. What is your proposal? <laughs> We're, uh, there's some changes coming to the government. And my proposal is when the time comes, you will work with us to stand against Senor Santiago and support that new government when uh, it comes into play. I can't make promises about the position you'll have in the future necessarily, but um, I think perhaps transitioning to being a noble representative might be a good fit for you. And you see him start to weigh it a little bit in his mind. What position will my sister have in this government? I couldn't say for sure. It kind of depends on everything going to plan. So you're saying that I might have a position underneath my sister and the new government? Uh, I mean, being a noble representative, it wouldn't be... The idea we're doing is that it would be a council of equals, not like one person at the head. So... No, there's not going to be like a Lena and then you and then so and so and then so and so. And if I and if I win or when I win, I get to take you to prison. Correct. Yes. Because that's really stuck. The last time I did it, I you know I'd I'd be alone. Here it's bad for morale. I'm offering this to you. Ours or yours? Mine, obviously. The rest of your crew would probably be overjoyed. I think you know. Since you're coming to scout out new hobbies alone. <laughs> like I said, it's a gift you give. Anyway, I mean, this this noble representative position, not saying that it's guaranteed, but I hear you have a new baby already, so, right? So you're saying that I bet staying out of everything, turning my back on my captain and friend for the last three years. Is friend friend? We're being a little generous here, aren't we? You know, the person I called family stole my the rest of my family and won't tell me where they're at. So, maybe I'm not in the happiest of moods. And maybe Senor Santiago hasn't gone back on anything he said. You're telling me you don't harbor any ill will towards him? You're not gone in for anything that he might have? You've never thought about make, if you were in a different position? Make me another convince roll. Okay. I'm going to re-roll one of those dice. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> one, two. Uh, it's two and one left over. Well, wanting to move up in power is different than wanting to betray someone. Okay, so you don't have to stab him in the back. You you can just absent yourself. Because your friends would your look support. super kindly if you just... Left them in the middle of a fight high and dry. For I, a maybe. I don't think he's going to be coming after you, if you get my drift. Then why do you need me to stay out of it? Because you have some clout with other folks in the guard. People like you. This doesn't feel like as sure of a thing as you're making me try to believe it. For a maybe. Wh which part doesn't feel sure? You I've seem to be saying, like, we're going to beat him, we can't stop it. But you also need me to back out. I think we have a decent chance without you doing this, but you doing this makes it a guarantee, you know? You're the, the linchpin. And the best you can do is give me, uh, you might be on the city government. I mean, a lot of people are not going to be, they're going to be caught flat-footed in this. And, uh... And when the cultus Falce shows up to hang me for my crimes... We're for taking care of that. What I'm saying is things are going to get bad here. It's it's going to get better in the end, but when you lance a boil, it makes a bit of a mess before it heals. So you getting out of the way will get you, it'll make you rise to the top when stuff all settles down. The thing is, I don't have any reassurances that I will rise to the top. Uh, you having some forewarning, I think, will make you rise to the top. Unless you guys throw me in prison. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't you? I mean, we do need people on the council. Because we've seen eye to eye. Who have an intelligent head on their shoulders, who know how to run things, 
we, we can't do this with total newbies, you know? I understand that, but I also threw all of you in prison. The old man of your group has threatened me with fire <laughs> and made me duel my sister in public, <laughs> humiliated me. And my sister is not no one for whom grudges slip easily from. And you're saying this is the person who definitely won't throw me in jail. I I can ensure that you don't get thrown in jail for what we're asking you to do. That I think would be unfair. I don't want to be not thrown in jail for what I you for what you're asking. I'm me saying to do. if you if you go like like murder me in front of Nostroy, that he's not going to burn your face off. I'm not sure he's not going to burn my face off the first chance he gets. He doesn't like me. He did that to Elias. And yeah, Elias sucks. But he did melt a face. I I think, honestly, if Nostray was was going to burn your face off, he would have done it already, don't you think? I don't know. Honestly, I don't talk with him. He's not my friend. Senor Santiago has tried to help me find my family. And how how is the rest of your family doing? I okay. don't know. No, no, no. How, how's your wife and your new baby doing? They're doing fine. Thank you for asking. I'm not telling you where they're at. I had to I'm hide not them. asking where they're at, but I am saying that... <laughs> how do I know? How do I trust you? <laughs> okay, hang on. I am going to say that does really read like a threat. Like, we're fighting. You're just like, how's your wife and kids? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell him his address, too? That'll seem friendly. <laughs> What I am saying is that in this time of instability, it might be a better idea to transition to a new role in which you are not the captain of people running around with swords. This is your opportunity to do that. Maybe, though. You said maybe a lot in the beginning. And that's what I'm hung up on. It's not, this is a transition, we are promising you a spot of power. You're saying... This is a transition. We might have a slot open for you if we feel like it. Do you understand how that rubs me the wrong way? I, I can see that. Is that having a guarantee of a specific position or just a position? A position would be fine. Okay, we can do that. I just didn't want to say you're going to be noble position three. No, I think I'm more like noble position one. You're you're the number three of this group. Ha ha, you're so funny. No, uh, there's only two of us here. <laughs> now, that one was good. Uh... Okay, he rolls so his eyes want, at you. So you want a position on the new console? Yes. And it's all right if you're managing something specific that I, you know, that I'm not declaring right now. But that is fine. But as long as it's not something stupid. Fine. We'll, we'll say noble representative. You um, can't. You can't. Since be... you are of a noble family and you have been around a long time, and you have clout with other people, I personally, I think that's probably a good position for you. I think so too. All right. This is all, of course, if uh, if I win, you know, maybe your, your uh, fighter Jamie over there, he can pull it out. I mean, I'm sure that like no stories up in the ceiling, wanting to like shoot fire down or something. How is there a ceiling? We're under the open sky. <laughs> I have seen so many. There is a giant rip in the sky. Werewolves run the streets. I'm not saying that he couldn't just fall in from nowhere and ruin my life. <laughs> Well, it'd be a surprise to me, too. I'll, I'll just say that. I just want to cut to, you know, Nyostroy just, like, halo jumping, you know, like, just flying down from the sky. Like, earpiece in, like, don't pull your chute until you're at a thousand feet. <laughs> <laughs> Cormac, like, one second, whispering, back off, back off, abort, abort. <laughs> Sigrether. Yeah. What is Go your warm-up like? <laughs> What does your uh, warming up look like? How do you, what are you doing before this match begins? Are, yeah, you're in a disguise too, right? You're using the... Yeah, using the amulet to disguise myself. Um, uh, she looks like a... She looks a Surin. Okay. Just to, so that she's not immediately recognizable. Because <laughs> I don't think... I don't think Miguel would have gone for it if she's like, that's clearly Sigrether over there. No. <laughs> so are, are you asking about like the warm-ups in front of the public or before she gets in front of anybody? Whatever you want to tell me. Okay. Tell me everything, but both. <laughs> Let's make this fun. I think before, like, while she's on her own before everything, she's just kind of meditating and, like, planning out what she's going to do in the fight. Um, but then once she actually gets in front of people, it's just lots of stretching and limbering up. Okay. 
Are you trying to size them up at all or no? Oh, absolutely. So as you're limbering up and stretching out, you know, doing your good calf stretches because you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> 33. I, the funny thing is, I don't think I realized that I made... How long have we been playing this game? This one? Uh, A year? Don't know. Hang on, I can figure it out. So I literally just made Sigurthur my exact age. Then. <laughs> For series one, we first recorded... Uh, in f- episode one was recorded April 11th of 2022. Okay, so not quite. Not not quite my exact age then when I made the character. But I have listed 33 on my character sheet. We've been doing this for two years. Wow. Well, thanks everyone who stuck with us for the two years, three years by the time like this all comes out. We appreciate your patronage. <laughs> I mean, you also have to remember that when we recorded the first episode, they did, the first ones didn't come out for a while after that. Fair. Anyway. Anyway. So, yeah. Limbering up. Stretching, stretching, out your, stretching out your calves. Kind of sizing up the opponent. Seeing if I can get any insight about him. So you see a Castilian man. And this is someone you don't know from your previous experience with the guild. He is someone new to you. He is in stereotypical Castilian clothes, which is kind of drab colors with a bright flourish of orange, which are the city's crest. So these crest colors. Sorry, drew a blank on medieval terminology for a second. Um, He looks somewhat muscular, but also not a powerhouse in the same way that you typically do. He is not completely jacked and ripped. You would guess that he leans more on uh, dexterity than just outright strength for winning. But to be a champion, you have to be smart as well as strong. So, All right, you guys warm up. Cormac has finished this conversation. Make me a roll, Sigrether. This is for the start of the fight? The start of the fight, and I'm also going to activate a hero fight. You need 15s. Or a danger point, I guess. Okay. For this first roll. That makes it interesting. My my plan was, I was going to, for the first like round, I was mostly going to defend, just to kind of size him up even more. Okay. But I don't know how that would work with this. Uh, just, just do the defense, and I'll... Uh, just do the defense, and I'll tell you how much damage you do or don't take. Okay. So you, instead of doing damage, you're avoiding right damage. So weaponry finesse. Okay, that works for me. And I'm assuming this is my first weaponry, right? Yes. Okay. And since I have rank four... Okay, here's a question. Since you raised it to 15s, what does rank four give me? Does that change? You have to get to 20s. I have to get 20s to get two raises? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So what, it doesn't technically raise it to 15. It adds plus five difficulty. Ah, so. okay. And, oh gosh, that's a lot of relatively low dice. I can re-roll a single die. So re-roll that one. That's better. So it's 9, 1, 9, 2. That's 20, at least. And then 12 plus 4. That's another 15. So f- three raises. All right. So this is to first blood. I should specify. You guys aren't, like, fighting to the death or anything crazy like that. Okay. Boo! Lame! <laughs> <laughs> That's the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Give us death! <laughs> Every medieval time show ever. <laughs> Man, I nearly made a deep cut to a D&D game that I played when I was, like, <laughs> 20. About to be like, cut his wings off! Like a thing that a guy was obsessed with in the... <laughs> The game I was playing, he would cut everyone's wings off. Oh, gosh. He starts off, you know, you do that, like, duelist dance around each other, you know, like, where you're circling. And him noting you taking a more defensive stance decides to go very aggressive. You are able to fend him off, but just barely as he is as skilled as you thought he would be. Okay. Time for another roll. Time for another roll. All right. I think this time uh, I'm going to go a little more aggressive, uh, trying to get that first blood. So this time I'm going to use brawn. All righty. Okay. That's so many dice. (laughs) Good. This is looking pretty good. My lowest die on the nine that I rolled was a four. Nice. As long as it's not nine fours. (laughs) (laughs) No, there were a couple tens in there. So that's six raises. Dang. <laughs> Honestly, you barely won. <laughs> oh, really? 
I got five raises. Which is kind of what we wanted. It's kind of what we wanted. (laughs) So you guys trade blows back and forth for a good while. And this is someone who you, or not begrudging, this is like the first fight you've had in a while that hasn't been to the death and has been with someone competent and at a similar skill level to your own. It was someone who is putting, making you put into practice all the things that you used to have to do and that you trained for. And you've like get a little bit sloppy over the years as you were doing a much more brutal form of combat than you necessarily want to do. You know, you like the style and show and the competition of it, not necessarily always the violence of it, if that makes sense. Right. And this is someone who's making you like, well, oh yeah, like this is like a, a move that you wouldn't use in real combat, but is a way that you can score first blood on, you know, someone in a duel. And you're having to relearn these moves that used to be second nature. And it is one of the most fun exhibitions you've had in a long while. Like there's there's definitely some maneuvers that each of us do that definitely leaves you open, but is a lot better chance of actually getting that first hit. <laughs> right. And in a real fight, you know, you wouldn't really use it because it's not like a killing blow and leaves you very open. But like in a duel, like that's fine, you know, if you get the first blood. But all that being said, you still are able to parry and block and being more on the aggressive. His offense is better than his defense. And you are able to score a hit after a few minutes of this bout. The crowd cheers. Andrea... The not humongous. <laughs> the enormous? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Andrea the enormous. Andrea the enormous, you have upset the champion. You are given a free ale at the counter. <laughs> and then I immediately teleport somewhere else. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I got that. That was funny. That was a good joke, Vinny. <laughs> I got you. You know, it makes it funnier when Cody points out that you had a good joke, Vinny. <laughs> I just didn't get it at first. I was like, what? Oh, yeah, right. The the ale is magic. I remember now. Flashing back to Miguel and Cormac. Guard number three. <laughs> or should I say Carp the Magnificent? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a fight. I can see why people like this, you know? I don't know what you did, but I know you have something to do with this, so stop acting smug. Can't. It's genetic. <laughs> I understand, Jeff, but you've been slapped a lot and it hasn't helped. <laughs> yeah, they keep thinking it'll, like, set me straight and it just, you know, it gets me a little more screwy every time. You'll be getting some uh, instructions soon, if you have any questions. Uh, Who are the instructions coming from? It- it'll be one of us. Y- you'll know. All right. Now, can I drink in peace? Absolutely. <laughs> Cormac just sits there quietly. <laughs> no, he, he like goes to do like a like a glasses clink and like Miguel just sits there. And so like Cormac has to like go all the way and like do all of the like extrovertedness of him. Like, <laughs> pleasure. Have a good day. You you clink glasses and go snail <laughs> going underneath this thing. Did you go the full hundred percent on the glasses clink? You don't go the full hundred percent, you go ninety, you let him come ten. <laughs> Gosh, Caitlin. I know. Watch Hitch. That's why That's why I can't get with Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason. The sole reason. Not that he's married. Not that he views you as riff raft. No, just the 90-10. Street rap. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. I don't buy that. I think they could get together. After he threatened his family. Enemies to lovers. <laughs> Again, married. <laughs> she can run away, you know? Maybe she decides she doesn't like him anymore. Maybe he's a good spouse and parent. You he don't know. could be. She just could not see the, the the beauty underneath in him. You know, she could be blind. Is what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm not into this budding romance plot that you're trying to shoehorn them into. <laughs> I'm not into the buddy hey, cop listener, romance. Submit your fan fiction to <laughs> Wandering Gamer Network at gmail dot com. I mean, I would read that on air. Like, oh yeah, we would do a special episode. Any ca- like you can get full voice cast. Oh, that'd be so fun. Anyway, you heard it here, listener. Wandering Gamer Network at gmail dot com. Send us your fan fiction, please, and thank you. End scene. All right, I think the old we have the only scene left before the last little bit is I think Nostroy in the theater, 
And then I know Mandy wants to do a scene about the lucky shot. No, lucky target. target. Do we still need, want to talk to the Duelist Guild? That's up to you guys. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Asking the group. That was on my list of potential things we needed to do. I believe that is the last... That's the last faction that we don't know either what side or whatever oh, yeah. that they are on. So what are we all thinking? That's a good question. I think... <laughs> Do we think we need muscle to go against Senior Santiago? It couldn't hurt, and it also might be fair to just talk about what we want them to be after the city switches, right? And like talk to them about that, even if they're not directly involved. Like, hey, look, management is going to change. Like, we're doing you a favor, giving you a heads up. Would you like to yeah. manage our intramilitary disputes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, who who wants to go talk? I would be willing to, but I don't have to. Uh, right now, it sounds like I have, I have going to talk about uh the alcohol. Uh, I am gonna drag Nostroy along uh for with me for that. The thing with the duelist skill is, if we want them to do anything, like if we want them for muscle, they like ask for like a handsome price for that. Yeah, I don't know that they'd be okay with getting like a promissory note of like a position in the future government in order to do stuff now. Yeah. And I don't know that we have the funds or like a way to do funds unless they have a lot of ships they need to mend. <laughs> the old Reef and Beef is here to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the fence with whether or not we should talk with them because I guess the 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 question would be if like cuz they're they're all basically all free agents, right? Like who who's the Duelist Guild is just like They're kind of mercenary, yeah. Could so could for instance, Senor Santiago, could he go to them and be like, I'm going to pay you guys a bunch of money to help put down a rebellion? Or is it like, go specifically and fight this one person to stop them? You know what I mean? Like, is he getting more men? Are you right. I think typically it's the latter, but I think the former is possible if we give Senor Santiago enough space to do that, which I... I was that would that yeah we, yeah we yeah were. we don't want to do that <laughs> I think it was going to be a one and done thing yeah but we don't necessarily have anything we can promise them right we had kind of talked about like settling disputes like amongst the military but that wasn't super concrete alternatively like once we get things in place we can just say talk to them and offer them X Y Z position. After things are more settled. Do you guys want to talk about this in character? Sure, why not? Assume I said everything with an accent. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying like sometimes no, you you're, guys... No, you're right, you're right. No, I was saying sometimes you guys circle around to the conclusion you want to be when you're talking as your character. Siggy, Nyozi, do you have any opinion on this? I think that my opinion on them is that... Probably they are not horribly impacted by a change in management, as right now they are kind of, like, paid indifferent already, right? They don't have loyalty, they work for money, so they can still continue working for money, but if they want to be more heavily involved, it is an option. Siggy, you've done work with them before. Do you have any thoughts on um, whether or not we should try to keep them from joining, potentially joining Senor Santiago or uh, Isabel's side? If I'm being honest, I don't know if we have anything that to entice them, because like Nostroy said, they're kind of motivated by money, and Senor Santiago definitely has more of it than we do. I don't know if floating the positions in the new government might help, but... Oh, wait a second. Can we straight up just rob Senor Santiago? That's not terrible. Does he have, like, a bank? Does he have a bank? Could we rob a bank? I mean, how did your last heist go? Great, I think. Is that the one with the cards? <laughs> no, I think that was the one where you got lit on fire and thrown through a door. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking about literally last episode when you guys tried to take out Elias. Right, we're doing this like non-linearly, so yeah. <laughs> we didn't try. We did it. It was successful. 
No, I'm pretty sure, like, most nobles, he probably has, like, you know, money in his house, and they have, like, he probably has it all in, like, jewelry and things like that. I don't... There's not, like, a bank to rob. Sounds like it's even easier than a bank. <laughs> right, I mean, so we take out Senior Santiago. We have one crew taking out Senior Santiago and the other one robbing his house. No, I'm saying is we rob his house and then pay off the duelist guild to fight for us. Oh, okay. We could also just steal the jewels from the royal palace. I mean, it's technically mine. I mean, won't the new government need that? If we get rid of Senior Santiago, I think we'll be flush with cash from him. <laughs> To replace anything we take. Are you just going to rob anyone that you defeat in battle? That's how that works. Yes. Doesn't have to be. You probably shouldn't be unless you're just planning on killing all of those people, which we are planning on killing Senior Santiago. So that's chill. But, (laughs) um, you know. That was kind of my thought. I didn't think we were pacifistically fighting him. It doesn't matter. I, I, you know, we could do either. But I do love a heisting of jewels. I like this plan. Can't believe you're making me do a heist now. <laughs> yes, heist. Zach, do it in character. You'll come to the answer yourselves. Do it in character. <laughs> We're robbing Senior Santiago's <laughs> house. Gosh darn it! <laughs> the monkey spot curls. <laughs> I said you'll come to the answer you guys want, not the answer I want. <laughs> I want to rob Senior Santiago's house, steal his jewels, potentially seduce his wife. That will be our end. And then swing on a chandelier out the window. <laughs> Preferably with his wife. <laughs> Just the full on Errol Flynn. <laughs> Is his wife like a like a maybe like stern, but you know once the bar like the barriers come to- like is she the mom from Brave? Because if she is, no choice to do singer. I'm not referring to any character as a mom, because I know how you feel about moms. <laughs> Generally positive. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that's how we a lot of steps to get the Duelist Guild uh, taken care of, but... I need four things for this heist. One, a floor plan of his house. Two, 15 gallons of fresh milk. Three, at least... And it doesn't have to be this few, but at least 45 chickens. The last thing, and this is the most important, the eye of a goat. Do you care to explain? Yeah, you dump the milk in the house, it stinks, he leaves, you throw in the chickens to distract the guard, the eye of the goat, you throw out at the one key time to make uh, someone slip who catches us in the floor plan of the house so we know where to dump the milk, where to release the chickens, and where all the jewels are. I have stolen jewels before. Using this method? I'm mad that this was not a bad plan. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, you make the house stink, they leave, they call in somebody, you pretend to be that somebody. You need 45 gallons of milk? No, 15 gallons of milk. That will rinse it very quickly and it will soak into carpets. Rich people have carpets. You throw down the milk, soaks into the carpet, r- goes rancid. They want to leave. That's fine. Guards are still there. They hate the smell. You throw in the chickens. They go nuts. Also works with greased pigs. <laughs> but chickens can fly, so you can throw them through the window and they still create havoc. With, with, the, with the greased pigs, do you... Label them one, two, and four, so everyone looks for number three. Oh, you label the 30 greased pigs <laughs> one through 25, and then 27 through 30. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like by the time we get to 15 gallons of milk, gallon one will be spoiled already. It's not that, I mean, you know, it depends on how many cows you have. We don't have a lot of cows! The city is... You, there have been no cows down Should here we do a first heist to steal cow's milk? No. And then a second heist? I think we could use we could use goat milk. There's plenty of goats. We'll use the goat milk. Oh yeah, we need one of their eyes. <laughs> too. Like, I don't think you know how weird it is if you're about to get captured and then you just show someone the eye of a goat and go, I have seen how you die. They usually, it gives them pause. And then you stab them real quick, and then you- I think you could maybe have the same effect with your fire and not maiming a goat? <laughs> goats are made to be- you eat goat. You eat goats. We- they are born to be eaten by us. They are consumable <laughs> items. 
<laughs> I don't think that means if you don't if you find that distasteful, stop eating goats. Because what they are is born to be slaughtered by me and you, so that we can eat meat easier. I think there's animal cruelty. I guess if we find the dead goat, then we could take its eye. There are a lot of every goat that you have ever eaten has created two goat eyes that we could use. <laughs> <laughs> every time you eat. A particular lamb chop realized there are two goat eyes laying on the ground somewhere. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sure that these... lamb eyes. <laughs> stop. <laughs> It'll do eye stuff. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> so he's gonna make an eye of Sauron with his fire. Got it. <laughs> I mean, that sounds scarier than the goat eye. I'm just saying. <laughs> Right, you see goat eyes all the time. You don't see an eye of fire all the time. Okay, but have you guys actually seen the eye of a goat? Because they're freaky looking. Yeah. They have, yeah. No, I gotta Google. They're like rectangles, right? Yeah, they have like a, a bar instead of a pupil. It's weird. Oh, that was in a story that I read, and I thought it was just because that specific goat was weird. I didn't realize it was a general goat thing. No, there's a reason why everyone equates Satan and goats. is because goats is the devil. <laughs> Uh, Cody, there's a reason that everyone says two plus two equals four. It's because two plus two equals four is what he just said. <laughs> I guess we're off to get goat's milk or some kind of milk. I wasn't specific about the milk. It just has to be fresh because you wanted to rinse it after it's on the carpet. I mean, technically you were kind of specific. You said milk. Well, I guess it's not specific. Do you know what specific means? <laughs> what type of milk do they drink in the middle? Whatever of animal they had around. I would assume. In my head, milk always applies to cow's milk, unless you say otherwise. That is every mammal, Zach. I know it's not every it's mammal. Bovine centric. <laughs> it is bovine centric because you want to know what I have two gallons of in my fridge? Cow's milk. Do you want to know what other type of milks? Okay, that was my attempt to move us to the next scene, but that's okay. We can keep talking about milk. <laughs> Do you want to know what mil other types of milk I have in my fridge? None. <laughs> in the past, Three years, there has been one time I have had milk other than bovine milk. And that is because we had someone who is lactose intolerant. I think I can be bovine centric and it's okay. Anyways, let's go find some goats. <laughs> <laughs> Goat heist 2024. <laughs> is this your plan for the heist? I guess. <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> what happened there was I. Freely came up with four non sequiturs oh, and then came we, up with a plan. We know exactly we challenged what happened. On it. This was my rocket raccoon joke where he's like, I need a battery, 15 credits, and that guy's leg. And then he's like, <laughs> gets the leg and he's like, I don't need those things. What you, I just needed the battery. Oh, I fully knew what you were doing, but they called your bluff and your plan was not terrible. And it makes me a little bit upset because I don't think I could have come up with a good, a better plan given more time. I'm good in exactly one place and that's on my feet. <laughs> okay. <sighs> This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys... F f oh, gosh. You guys find 15 gallons of goat milk. Are you doing the pigs or the chickens? <laughs> chickens. I gotta think the chickens would be easier, yeah. There's a lot of chickens you're looking for. I say we do five chickens and label them one through six or whatever. Solid. Leave out three. I vote we steal them from the docks. Yeah. Oh yeah, just, just steal upend, a crate of chickens. Let's just upend a bunch of chickens. Yeah. Just, I do like this montage of like Cormac casually leading on like a box of chickens, just being like whoop, like putting it in your shirt, running down the street. <laughs> <laughs> the other night of Avalon, just like look at you as you do this, like watch the whole thing. <laughs> it's for a just cause. <laughs> You know I'll that. come back and mend their ship. Oh, that'd actually be heartbreaking for you, wouldn't it? Because it's like, that's like your guy who's, you want to impress and you just yeah. see lift chickens. I'll, I'll come back and mend their ship, I promise. You know that meme that gets passed around every so often where it's like the dungeon master picks like the tone and the players pick the music that's playing during it. And it's like, and the players always pick yakety sacks. Man, <laughs> have I never felt that more in my life. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh. Okay. You find all the components you want. Someone make me a... I think I should make a performance check because I'm doing something theatrical in this whole thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cody can make a performance check for the goat eye. Uh, someone needs to make me an aim check with the chickens who is not Cody. 
Someone needs to make me a scholarship check on the map. And someone needs to make me a... Like a stealth, a hide for the milk? Yeah. Is there a lie check in this? There's not Mm. a lie. I'll give you theft or sneak, yeah. So I need a sneak, I need a scholarship, or a hide, yeah. I need a hide, I need a scholarship, and I need... What was the other one I said? An aim. aim. Uh, I'll take the scholarship one. Um, what would you say? Wits? Yes, for sure. We need an aim and we need a hide. I'm going to do aim because I have an advantage um, that gives me an extra raise. As opposed to hide, which you have an ability which you can just spend a point on to hide. That's like specifically, oh, I guess I could. (laughs) Which would you like to do, Vinny? Oh, man. Let me tell you what. I really could have spent a hero point to get any one of these individual items, too. <laughs> it's like a thing I have. Oops. Sigurd, which one does Sigurdur want to do? The hide or aim? They're both equally awful. Okay. Why don't you do the hide one? And what am I hiding with? Uh, Whatever you want. How are you doing this? However you sneak in and spill the milk. Broad. <laughs> I mean, you do have to be sneaking while carrying a ton of milk. The thing that, so that's the, not terrible to broad use broad is not here. bad. You just have to tell me how that is sneakily doing it. Like, you can use any of the five traits. She's, just, like, pyramided the gallons of milk up and is, like, tiptoeing while Is she using them, them, like, as just, like, a shield? Like, they're all linked together and she can just, like, set them, like, you know, like, hiding in a barrel? But it's for all 15 gallons. <laughs> just a box? <laughs> <laughs> She, like, sets it down, and there's, like, a pyramid of barrels. Right. Now, is this easier because of my size? I mean, carrying a bunch of milk seems like it would be much easier if you're gigantic. I think hiding is also harder because you're gigantic. No, no, no. Let's focus on the milk. <laughs> Fine. I'll take I'll take my one win and not press my luck. <laughs> I'm going to do it as a net neutral. <laughs> okay. The funny thing is, um, my, my brawn is five. Guess how many dice I'm rolling. Five. Six? Technically six, because this is my first hide, I think. It is, yeah. So six. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, over here belly aching. I got four and an extra die. Uh, For the scholarship roll, I got two. I'm not buying any of your dice from this, you heathens. <laughs> you absolute degenerates. I, I didn't have any left over. And I'm especially not buying any of Nostroy's. <laughs> I'm extra not buying them. I got two. I also got two. Then Cormac, you got four, you said? Or three? I got four. Wow, Cormac just... Yeah, I got two tens, so... That helps. All right. So this plan is performed competently for as ridiculous as it is. The good news is Cormac does a fantastic job of lobbing chickens to distract the guards that no guards show up to bother you at all. Heck yeah. Do I need to describe this more? I feel like we've described it like three times already about... The spilling of the milk. Oh, I have I have some flair I'm adding if no guards show up. All right, add your flair. <laughs> I'm sure this will go great for me. So, you know, like, he left. It stinks because of all the spilled milk. Chickens are in the house. It's going nuts. Yostro is standing in there, I guess, with uh, Magdalena as we're, like, starting to... Yeah, because she has the map and I'm holding the eye to try to, like, scare someone with it. Nyostra looks at the eye and goes, it seems a waste. Do not use the eye for something. So he goes to Senor Santiago's bed and stabs it into the pillow Uh. and leaves a note that just says, we're watching and pain will follow. Right as he finishes writing that, you just hear Cormac throw another chicken and goes, And Nyostroy steals all the jewels and, you know, runs out. I want to imagine that, like, Nyostroy looks a little bit like Captain Jack Sparrow in this moment, like, just covered in necklaces, <laughs> like, running like a bag of nickels, just, chink, 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 chink. every pocket is stuffed, <laughs> necklaces, crowns, you know. You do that, and you as you all escape into the night, trying not to smell like milk, <laughs> and that's where we'll end. Hey Wanderers, thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Corsairs of Castile. This game is being run in the 7th Sea 2nd Edition system. If you want to hear more content from the Wandering Gamer Network, you can check us out at the Wandering Gamer Network website. We stream on Twitch with the username wandering underscore gamers, and we're also on Facebook and Instagram. 
All information about the music used can be found in the episode description. Until next time, wherever you wander, may you find your way home.